Hello friends, my name is Kishan. In this video tutorial, today we are going to discuss about the spring dependency injection. So, what is a spring dependency injection? So, let's try to understand first what is dependency injection in a spring. Every Java based application has a few objects that work together to present what the end user sees as a working application. When writing a complex Java application, application classes should be as independent as possible of other Java classes. To increase the possibility of reuse these classes and to test them independently of other classes while doing unit testing. Dependency injection helps to wire these classes together and same time keeping them independent. In Spring objects define their association or dependency and do not worry about how to get those dependency. Now it is the responsibility of a Spring to provide the required dependencies for creating objects. By dependency injection, the responsibility of creating objects is shifted from our application code to a Spring container. Hence, phenomena is called IOC or inversion of control. A spring helps in creating loosely coupled application because of dependency injection. Uh, consider an example. Uh, suppose you have an application which has a communication component and you want to provide active MQ messaging your standard code would look like this so we have created communication class here we have declared active MQ as a instance variable and active MQ messaging we have instantiated within the communication constructor and uh, communication has a method is called communicate so just we are making a call of active MQ messaging from within this class so what we have done here here we have instantiated active MQ message within the constructor of communication so these two classes are tightly coupled so what we, we have done here creating a dependency between communication and active MQ messaging in in an inversion of control scenario we would instead do something like this so instantiation part we have removed from here we are not instantiating active message messaging class over here uh, instantiation part we uh, we are going to move somewhere in the configuration file and uh, In that case, here communication should not worry about active MQ messaging implementation. The active MQ messaging will be imp implemented independently and will be provided to the communication at the time of communication instantiation. And this entire process is, is controlled by the Spring framework. So here we have removed the total control from communication and kept it somewhere else in configuration file. And the dependency is being injected into the classes communication class uh, class through a class constructor. Thus control of control has been inverted by the dependency injection because you have effectively, effectively delegated dependency to the external system. So first type of dependency injection is using constructor. So this is called constructor based dependency injection. And uh, constructor uh, based dependency injection we will configure in XML file like this. You have a XML doc type on the top of the XML file. Then we have configured 
communication class like this communication bean id equal to communication class is equal to qualified name of your communication class and uh, this is a constructor dependency injection so we have written constructor arc ref equal to active mq messaging so this is the id of active mq class this is also another spring bean so this id we have mentioned over here so this is called a spring based dependency injection this is the first kind of dependency injection now second dependency injection is the setter based dependency injection so here in setter based dependency injection usually we declare the instance of another class and we have a setter method of uh, this instance variable so here we have now here uh, we haven't initialized this one so initialization process and here you would have written like this, this dot active mq message equal to new active mq message instantiation you can do over here but in dependency injection basically we do not worry about the instantiation of active mq messaging this the instantiation process we have moved into a configuration file so this is the structure of setter based dependency injection and setter based uh, dependency injection configuration file would like uh, would look like this so there is little change so inside the when you configure communication bin then instead of constructor arc we have written property name equal to active mq messaging this is the name of your this instance variable this name and ref equal to i have written, written active mq messaging this is the id of an, again another bin so this is this is the uh, setter based dependency injection this is the another type of dependency injection so guys of course you can mix both constructor based and setter based dependency dependency injection but it is a good uh, rule of thumb to use constructor arguments for mandatory dependencies and setter for optional dependencies code is cleaner with the dependency injection principle and decoupling is more effective when objects are provided with their dependencies the objects does not look up its dependencies and does not know the location or class of the dependency rather everything is taken care by the spring framework so that's all i have in this video tutorial guys so if you like this video then please hit on the like button and provide your valuable comments as well so thank you guys and see you in the next video